In the name of Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Alleluia, Rogue Traders. Warhammer 40k, Rogue Trader, Priest, Guide. The Unfair Priest. Let's go. Are you ready for Warhammer 40k, Rogue Trader? As I am. The Emperor protects. After the character creation, I guess that I don't need to remind you that you're gonna play as Dogmatic. Full Imperialis, okay? You are for the Emperor, which means that you're gonna pick Imperialis Dogmatic option whenever possible, and you're gonna become a Zealot. Imperialis. Okay. Now, the very first Arch type would be a Warrior, where we get Charge, on the next level we get Athletics, then we go into Endure, then we go into a Daring Breach Ulti, and the first talent that we're gonna pick would be Hardened Scars. Then we're gonna take Thick Skin talent on the next, so we go with Bulky talents, Tanky talents non-stop, Thick Skin for the next talent, into Strength. We wanna max out Strength as soon as possible, so we can equip Heavy Armor. On the next level, we go with a Sworn Enemy. Okay, more bulkiness when close to enemies. Then we go with Athletics, then we're gonna take Strength, and then we're gonna take Petty from Dueling Mastery. Okay, we wanna parry as much as we can. After that, we're taking Coercion, slowly preparing for Solomon Weir armor from the very start of the game. Then we're gonna take Clenched Teeth talent, extremely good at mitigating damage. After that, we're gonna take Daring Breach, ulti upgrade number 3. After that, we're gonna go into the Invigorated Hatred talent. After that, we're taking Toughness, Toughness, Strength and Weapon Skill non-stop. Then we're gonna take Taunting Scream for the final Warrior ability, AoE Taunt. And we're gonna take Combat Master Common talent. Okay, no melee superiority. After that, we're going again into Toughness, then into Coercion, and then we're gonna take the Epicenter of Slaughter talent. After that, we're going to Carouse. We're finishing up with Weapon Skill into It Will Not Die, of course, for the extra wounds. And the final ulti upgrade would be Daring Breach upgrade number one. After that, we are becoming a Vanguard with Unyielding Beacon Stags that's gonna provide additional tankiness. The first ability that we're gonna learn will be the Wall of Rakrit into Heavy Armor Proficiency and now we equip Heavy Armor, the very first one that you're gonna find in the game or that you can buy, trade in the game. Pick your armor well. The higher the deflection, the higher the armor, the better the Heavy Armor is. After that, it's gonna be upgrade for the Rakrit, which is gonna become Perocrit. After that, we get the Unyielding Guard ulti and the huge power spike with action point increase into toughness. On the next level, we get toughness again into the Beacon of Might talent. Again, extra tankiness. And extra tankiness comes also with a defensive stance ability that we're gonna take as the second ability on a priest for the Peri. After that, we're taking Coercion. Then we're gonna take Resilient Beacon Talent, okay, again extra tankiness, and then we're gonna take Steel of the Forge Talent, again for extra tankiness. We are a tanky priest, very, very tanky priest. Then we're gonna take Strength, and then we're gonna take the first upgrade for the priest special unique ability, and it's gonna be Litany of Purification, the only one that we're gonna need. We will be a tank, we will go close in, and when we trigger war him, we wanna disturb all enemies around us. This is very useful on a tanky priest. After that, we're taking the Enduring Shield for additional parry. After that, we're taking Coercion into Strength, into Unyielding Guard, upgrade number one, where you cannot die. 
And then we're gonna go into your taunting defense talent for additional parry again, then it's athletics into weapon skill. And the final ability that we're gonna get, it's gonna be Bulwark from the Vanguard. After Bulwark, we're gonna take, uh, take Renitan Beacon for additional armor and parry. After that, it's the weapon skill, and then it's athletics. And on the next level is the counterattack stance, the upgrade for the defensive stance. And then we're gonna take the Emperor Protects, so we can negate 4% chance to negate all damage. And the final ulti upgrade on the Vanguard will be ulti upgrade number three. The Exemplar, of course, we're gonna start with a perfection under fire, raise all characteristics, raise all skill checks, and we're gonna opt in for the defensive stance talent. On the next level, we're taking coercion into a covering bulwark. After that, we're taking toughness into a free grenade from the grenadier. Then we're gonna learn the ability called breakthrough for some extra attacks, and then we're gonna take coercion again. After that, it's the talent toughest steel from the example or we're gonna raise overall wounds and then we're gonna take punish the imprudent talent to the next level again we're taking toughness into the living shield talent for the next level we're gonna take some damage buff with follow my lead okay you need some damage buff at the end of the game and on the same level we're taking again damage buff with strength after that is the unyielding resolve talent into the chain weapon expert now chain weapon expert is one of the options and the other option would be power weapon expert have that in mind now it depends with what item you want to play this is your choice whether you want to play with righteous justice or with the eviscerator so again pick smart here after the chain weapon expert or power weapon expert we're taking athletics into peak condition which will raise strength like crazy which means you're gonna hurt a lot after that, it's the power spike increase, action points, we're gonna have six now, into talent called Unrage, into Athletics. After that, we're taking open engagement talent into Carouse, and at the end, we're finishing with defensive comrade and the weapon skill. Eager for battle is also a very good exemplar to take, okay, for two additional exemplar talent to take for two additional action points or anything that's gonna provide additional tankiness as a mini storm priest warrior vanguard you are there to tank to soak up damage to keep your allies safe and to frighten all enemies around you to literally disturb them this is why you're there you want to accumulate as much of them you can around you and disturb them okay because they hate imperialis now as far as the stats go what you see here drastically goes up during combat this goes above 200 300 percent this goes above 50 deflection okay and Perry is maxed out so you are extremely tanky Itemization for the weapon of choice, Eviscerator and Righteous Justice are just the best weapons that you can wield. Before that, all the hammers that can push enemies are great, but in the other slot, you should always try to equip something that's gonna give you huge bonus to parry. Okay, until you find these two weapons, you wanna take something like this, okay? Where is the biggest parry on a weapon? That's the one you want to use, basically, until you find the steel. Okay. Also, very good gamers for the start, where you can shove, push enemies, whack their, their heads on a wall, and so on and so forth. They're also great to have. Now, what is the other gear? For the helmet, we want pirate scarf and nothing else. Pirate scarf on a priest. But that's how it is. For the armor, we want Solomon Veer armor, the tankiest armor in the game. For the trinkets, we want a knuckle guard and we want hexagramic grace. For amulet, very good one is ancient xenom mechanism. If you don't like the damage that you can deal around you with xenom mechanism, you can always opt in for amulets that are gonna give you strength, weapon skill, toughness, or coercion. That's the stats that you search for. 
As far as gloves go, there's no better gloves than exoskeletal gloves in the game as far as this build goes. For the cape, navy swashbuckler coat is great and basically any coat that's gonna provide you with tankiness, armor and so on. And for the boots, enforcer light boots are extremely good. You will out your parry everything, okay? And then you kick enemies back and you're gonna hurt them. Also, unyielding beacon boots are very nice on this build as well. Your choice what you want to go for. There's also boots that can reduce section points of charge that you can find very early on in a game. Those are also valid. Those would be the boots that you can carry during your run as a priest. How do we play Ministorium Priest? At the start, early game, okay, till you reach chapter 2, you wanna charge, you wanna endure, you wanna make enemies sworn, and you wanna taunt. When there's a lot of enemies around you, you wanna whack war him. It's as simple as that. Later on, you wanna wreck Wall of Rakrit, which is now Wall of Ferrocrit, in the middle of your allies, so all of them gain additional wounds, and then you wanna buff up, prepare with Endure, prepare with Sworn Enemy, stand in front of someone with a Bulwark, so you act as a full cover, for example, you stand in front of Argento or in front of Iliad, okay, and you protect them, that's all that you do, okay. Once enemies get close enough, you enter, you're gonna whack follow my lead, you're gonna whack someone with a basic attack, you're gonna charge to the other one, you're gonna whack war him, and you're gonna disturb everyone around you. That's about it. This is a very simple build to play with. As far as ultis go, once you get mad, you can always trigger Daring Breach, and you can burst any enemy on the map that's far away and that you cannot reach with other characters. Okay. If there's way too many of them and you want to auto counter attack, when there's like 10 enemies around you, you whack defensive stance and you're gonna kill them all during their own turn and nothing will happen to you because you are a beast, a tanky priest. Do not forget that this is Dogmatic Imperialis campaign if you decide to play as a priest. And it's extremely valid on that type of run. Build. It's not that fun during combat, but you need someone to control, okay, and this is full control, you don't need cover, you don't need half cover, you just go in there with your priest, and you scare enemies around you, basically that's what you do, you're soaking up damage and you cannot die. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like, share and subscribe, and I'll be seeing you on the next one. Thanks for watching. Thanks.